this result. Now, the reason it becomes very, it becomes very complicated very quickly. So the example I showed were trivial, right? Why, why can this become so difficult so quickly? Well, I mean, imagine that now you have, instead of one parameter, you have something high dimensional. You have five, 10, 15 parameters. Now you end up with a, a very high dimensional probability distribution for your posterior. Now you can have, your model typically is, is highly nonlinear, which means that um, you, have, you, you have correlation between your parameters and this can make the interpretation of a posterior quite challenging. Of course, you'll have many observables and heavy end collision we can use, depending on, if you consider, for example, different centralities and different PT bin as different observables, you can, uh, you can be using uh, 50 to hundreds of uh, essentially observable to constrain, your to constrain your parameters. So it becomes a high dimensional problem in terms of your parameters, the posterior becomes high dimensional, but also it becomes a high dimensional problem because you have multiple model outputs and, and in consequence, multiple, you know, multiple sets of data to compare with. And your experimental uncertainties also become, um, you know, 100 by 100 matrices. Now these uncertainties can become quite challenging as well. So the stat uncertainties in general are relatively straightforward to handle but can have all kinds of systematic uncertainties, which can be correlated across PT pins, across centralities, across observables. And all of this can be taken into account by defining properly your covariance matrices here. Now, this has an effect on your Bayesian parameter estimation. So in a sense, it, the Bayesian parameter estimation gives you a tool to do it, but it also be, it can become overwhelming because you need, you need to input a lot of information into your parameter estimation to really obtain the, 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 the more systematic answer that you can on the parameter estimation. This prior theoretical knowledge is also, uh, can also be uh, an issue. So not an issue, but it can become challenging. You need to have a good idea of the range of parameter that you want to study. So you want, if you're looking at shear viscosity, you want to decide if you're probing between zero and 0.03 or 0.02, what is the range of temperature that you're interested in? So all of these can be accounted for methodically, systematically in a Bayesian part of the estimation, which is the good news. Um, it also means that it can be this, it, it's also all of this that makes the Bayesian part of the estimation challenging. It's, it's all this information that, it's all these opportunities that you can use to make your, your estimation better, to make a better use of data, but it can also make the problem relatively complex. Now, one of the challenge that you will encounter is, as I said, so the posterior has the dimensionality of your parameter space. If you have five parameters, your posterior is five dimensional. If you have 10 parameters, 10 dimensional. Now, when it was in 1D, it was easy enough to visualize, right? You have your posterior, you have your single parameter, you just plot this. Now, already in 2D case, this becomes more challenging. So you have, for example, if you have two parameters, one way to plot it is with this kind of density plots. So this figure is from this nature physics paper from the Duke group. So you have here, for example, the width of your bulk viscosity and the maximum of your bulk viscosity. And this essentially the darker color means that these regions are favored by data and the lighter color are, are less, in a sense, they're disfavored by data. So this is one way if you have a high dimensional output to visualize your result. Now, you may also want to project the result in 1D still. So what you can do is integrate out one of the dimension and obtain a 1D projection for the parameters. So actually this is from the original paper. So uh, they did it in the paper. And what you essentially are doing is you take your posterior that depends on, for example, two parameter and you simply integrate out 
one of the parameter, and that gives you your marginal posterior for this parameter. And you can do it for any of the parameters. And you can see that you have useful information in both cases. So it's useful to project it, but you lose information. If, you, if I give you only these two distribution, it's not obvious, these two 1D distribution, it's not obvious that you have this anti-correlation between the parameters. So you have to be creative when you want to visualize your posterior in many dimensions. There are different ways of visualizing it. And depending on how you do it, you may, you may lose information if, if you integrate out. But if you don't integrate out, it could be that you simply just cannot read your posterior. So there's a trade-off, you have to be creative. Now, this can be generalized to an arbitrary number of parameters. And actually, this is already highly integrated out. So the original posterior in this example was, I believe, 14 dimensional. So this already integrates out 12 parameters before you can visualize the correlation between these two. So they're all integrated over and you get this distribution. And if you integrate one more time, you get these distributions. Now there are other ways that you can visualize as well. So, and that's what I mean when I say you have to be creative to visualize the, the posterior. So for example, this is an example from Jetscape actually from a Bayesian analysis that we're performing. So let's say you have ball viscosity and you want to study its temperature dependence. You first decide on a parturization. For example, here we have a maximum. We assume that there's a peak in ball viscosity Position of this peak is given by this red line. You have a maximum here. You have a width and you have an asymmetry parameter. So you really have four parameters here just to constrain the temperature dependence of all this cost. And visualizing four parameters that are correlated is non trivial. What you can do, for example, is you can um, look at essentially, you can first marginalize over all the other parameters. And then you can uh, plot, essentially you can look at the regions that are, that have the highest values of posterior essentially. And you can plot these regions here. So this is a 60% credible interval. This is a 90% credible interval. And you can also show the posterior for reference, which is essential as well. And the, the result is that in this figure, you can actually visualize four parameters it, with in a, in a single figure and you get a lot of information about your um, your posterior in this way. Now you sacrifice other information as well because now it's difficult to know, for example, the correlation between different uh, points in temperature. You, you cannot see this information in this figure and you could see this information if you plot if you plotted that result in some other way. So again, and again, let me emphasize, this is also integrated, this is also marginalized. So you will almost always marginalize your posterior. It's impossible to visualize a, a 10 dimensional product distribution in your head or numerically. Um, so you have to project. So often you will be integrating over uh, five, 10 dimensions before you can obtain a figure like this. Now, the way you integrate, of course, in high dimensions is, again, it's not trivial. And this is the kind of problem, usually when you hit you know, 10 dimensions, uh, you don't use quadrature rules. I mean, usually you give up quadrature way before that. So, so you want to marginalize over these posterior using Monte Carlo methods. So when you hear people discussing about uh, MCMC, Markov chain Monte Carlo, in Bayesian parameter estimation, what it's used for, it's used to sample this posterior. So you want to know, since you want to, to um, you want to um, essentially integrate this posterior and project it in different uh, dimension. Um, so you want to sample the, this posterior. I will not have examples myself of sampling the posterior, but some of, I believe tomorrow way out uh, Wei Ao's um, hands-on session will have examples of how we sample a posterior with MCMC. And I'll also give a homework assignment for, for tonight that will also have uh, some information about uh, this sampling. Uh, 
I don't know if there's any question at this point. Yeah, Stefan? Oh, okay, please proceed. All right, so, so just to drive home the 